Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas More. We are pleased that you have joined us. We have these announcements. First, remember that fair trade coffee, teas, and chocolate items are for sale in the gathering space on a self-serve bias. Your support to St. Thomas More Fair Trade allows our social justice community to assist many area organizations in their help with the needy. Next weekend, we will resume the monthly The Last Shall Be First food pantry collection. You may leave non-perishable food items and supplies in the multi-purpose room. Please stand and extend a socially distanced welcome to those around you as we prepare for the Mass. Jesus, whom we love, we proclaim your word for ages all to come. Alleluia. Sing a new song. Glory to our God of everlasting life. And we'll rise up, rise up with him and we'll rise, rise to new life and we'll rise up, rise up with him for with Jesus who leads us by grace we will rise up with him. For with Jesus, who leads us, by grace we will rise up with him. We come together in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This, uh, third Sunday of the Easter season, our readings remind us of God's power to forgive, even greater than our ability to sin. Let's trust in that power that comes from Jesus' resurrection from the dead, acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. You nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. 
you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as our, your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be cover, converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let all those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the houses of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his com commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? 
Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for sheer joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, which he took, and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. One piece of art that many people have uh, seen and would recognize right offhand is that picture of the painting that was done by Albert Gruer, Praying Hands. It's one of those pieces of art people universally recognize. But, but I recently heard the story behind it that I hadn't uh, ever heard. Albert Gruer and his brother Albert grew up in a family of 18 children in Germany and in the 15th century, and of course their family struggled financially. Two boys both were uh, people that wanted to be artists. They both had some natural talent, but neither of them could, of course, afford to go to the university to receive art training, and so they made a pact. They said, one of us will go, and the other will stay home and work in the mines and pay for it, and then after four years, the other person will go. Well, after church one Sunday morning, they flipped coins to decide who was going to go, and, and it was decided that, decided that Albert would go to, uh, to the university to study and get an education in art, and his brother would stay home and work in the mines. Well, after, after four years' time, it seems that uh, Albert came home, and he became quite a but I'm an artist. He, he had done very well in those four years at the university and made a name for himself and sold a number of pieces of art. But when he uh, asked his brother and said, okay, now it's your turn to go to the university and I'll support you, and his brother got tears in his eyes. He held up his hands, and, and, and because of the four years of hard work working in the mines, a couple of his fingers had been broken and were arthritic, and the hard work had caused his hands. Now he said, I can barely even hold a cup of water, let alone a paintbrush. His days of being an artist were over. Well, it was some time later that they were in church, and, and the brother noticed his uh, other brother's hands in prayer. And he decided, I'm going to paint those hands uh, in, in homage to my brother for all that he's done for me. And so he painstakingly drew those hands those wounded hands, and that became a great masterpiece. Next time you see a copy of that painting, take another look at it and, and be reminded that, of course, nobody makes it on their own. We all need the support of one another and the sacrifices of others. But also see this, that in sacrificing for one another, we all advance together. People said that they see in that painting the story of sacrificial love, generosity, and gratitude. You know, that's kind of a little bit like the Easter story. That's the rest of the story about the praying hands. But, but we're told the Easter story today, the rest of the story about the disciples on the road to Emmaus. That first Easter day. They, of course, as you remember that wonderful story in Luke's Gospel, Meet the risen Lord on that path as they're driving or as they're walking away from Jerusalem, as they're trying to end it all. They're, they're done with following Jesus, and in their discouragement, he appears with them on the road. Tells the scriptures, breaks open the bread. They feel their hearts burning within them. Jesus is with them, although they don't recognize him. 
until they sit down at table where he breaks bread, and in the breaking of the bread, they recognize him. Well, we hear the rest of the story today. They run back, back to the upper room in Jerusalem and tell the other disciples. And as they're telling the story, Jesus appears. Just like last Sunday's gospel, when Jesus appears, the first thing he does is show them his hands, his feet, his wounds. I think there's something noteworthy about that. You know, Jesus wouldn't have had to appear with wounds on his hands and his feet, his side. You know, his resurrected body was a glorified body. He could have appeared in any way he wanted. And, of course, he did. He appeared to Mary Magdalene, and, and the, Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. He appeared on that road without wounds, seemingly. But why did he do that to these unbelieving disciples? Why did he show his wounds? I think it was a way of saying, look how much I've loved you. Look how you've been forgiven. Look and receive the peace that comes from the resurrection. Now, that's an important message in all there are readings this weekend. They're all about overcoming sin through Jesus' resurrection from the dead and his granting peace. That's what Peter is really saying to the crowd in, in Jerusalem in that Pentecost speech. It's, it's one we have to be careful with. It's almost as if he's blaming a certain group of people, and, and we certainly don't want to read an anti-Semitic message into what his speech, but, but in a sense, he's not blaming any one people. He's, he's saying all of us have betrayed Christ. All of us have denied him and gone off on our own ways. And yet, if we open our hearts to it, he's saying we can be forgiven, and we should see his wounds as that healing for us as well. Jesus shows his wounds. He also eats with them. It's interesting that he asks them for food to eat. Why would he do that? Well, first of all, it's proof that he's not a ghost. He's, he's a resurrected body. He's a person that they knew and loved and followed for three years. He eats with them. But the second thing is the disciples came to know Jesus through meals. In Luke's gospel, that's especially true. Jesus shares meals constantly from the beginning. Even the, 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 the idea that he was born in and placed in a manger of food trough for animals. He came as food. And, and throughout Luke's gospel, he's eating with sinners all the way to the end. And the Last Supper and then the story of Emmaus. So they recognized him. And in sharing that meal in the upper room, in sharing food, they would come to recognize Jesus. And the same is true for you and me. It's why we come to this table every Sunday, or even every day for many. Jesus here appears to us in word and sacrament and in this Eucharist and, and also forgives us with those good news, the good news of showing his, his love for us, in his wounds and in his, his resurrection from the dead. And he also commissions us, just like that gospel ends with, he, you are my witnesses to all these things. So that's said to us as we're sent forth to be witnesses of his great love. And we witness not just by our words, but also by, by our actions and by our willingness to sacrifice for one another. You know, a number of years ago, and in a commencement address, the actor Martin Sheen, in that commencement address, he said to the graduates, he told the le an, an Irish legend, he said, of a gentleman who appeared at the gates of heaven and, and, and asked St. Peter to let him in. And of course, St. Peter said, certainly, but show me your wounds. My wounds, the man said, I, I have no wounds, no scars. And Peter responded, my goodness. Was there nothing in your life worth fighting for? Nothing worth the scars of love, the scars of sacrifice? As we celebrate this, uh, this Mass today, remembering the sacrificial love of Jesus, let's recommit ourselves to being bold witnesses of all that we've seen and heard, of all we've come to know of the tremendous love of God. And then others, too, will know the depth of God's love. Others, too, will know the rest of the story.
profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believed in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As members of Christ's body, with faith in his resurrection, we turn to him whose promises never go unfulfilled. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children who are receiving First Communion this spring, that they will experience God's love and forgive them love for them, and God's care and protection each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ, and that we may recognize them as brothers and sisters through the wounded Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of the wounds of racism and prejudice, that God will help us to recognize the dignity of each person and work to heal the wounds and divisions that exist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children baptized this weekend, Elton, Brooks, Emily, Graham, Liam, Annie, and Anthony, that their lives be blessed by an abundance of God's care in their families and in our church community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers of our faith and community, and for the prayers we pause to mention in the silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, throughout history, you've promised to remain close to your people. Hear us in the prayers we offer. We make them through our risen Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also the gifts we bring that they may bear perpetual fruit and eternal happiness. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. The sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With trust in God's love for us, we dare to now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn and offer a gesture of peace to those who are near.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Prayer for spiritual communion for those who are worshiping with us online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. And I would invite those who are in their automobiles, come to the gathering space if you wish to receive Holy Eucharist. Remain in me. I am the vine, remain in me, you shall have life, you are the branches, bear fruit for all to see, I am the vine, remain in me. No branch can live without the tree. Nor grow or serve apart from me. This I have told you that you may see. My love in you, your joy complete. Remain in me. I am the vine. Remain in me. You shall have life. You are the branches their fruit for all to see. I am the vine, remain in me. No longer slaves, I call you friends. I shall be with you to the end. Keep my commandments, I dwell in you. So now bear witness to the truth. Remain in me, I am the vine. Remain in me. You shall have life. You are the branches, bear fruit for all to see. I am the vine, remain in me. As I have done, so you should do. So as to love as I love you, for in your witness my love is shown. 
in the simple ways my heart made known. Remain in me. I am the vine. Remain in me. You shall have life. You are the branches their fruit for all to see. I am the vine, remain in me. Let us pray. Look with kindness on your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew with eternal mysteries may attain in the flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have the honor of baptizing three babies after Mass tonight. Uh, Elton and Brooks Winnicky, twins, uh, children of Kurt and Stephanie, and uh, Emily Boyce, child of Tim and Ashley. So we congratulate them and welcome them into our faith community. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. People of God now rejoicing in Christ, carry your joy to the darkness of night. Tell the world, tell the world, he is alive. Hear the good news of this glorious day. Every heart singing as heaven proclaims, He is Lord, He is Lord, He is alive. Alleluia, love is alive. Conquered the grave and defeated the night. Alleluia, love is alive. The sun has arisen for all. Your people sing Alleluia.